Let's not forget about the tropics. They are yes, active. Yes, very much so. So that's our lead story. I mean, when you look at the board for tropical disturbances, it catches your eye, mm. especially because we haven't had anything since Ernesto. That's true, yeah. It's very, very uh, odd to have stretch. such a quiet August. Yeah, exactly. And you think about the stretch we've had, 56 years mm -hmm. or so since we've gone this long without a, a named storm here. It's incredible. So, you know, you look at the map, you're like, well, that's intense. Uh, yeah. But we have no bona fide systems which is odd in itself, but we are starting to see a little more action and we could see some development out of several of these areas. So let's get right to it. That's the big board. Uh, probably tropical disturbance number two, the one yeah. that is commanding most of the attention, especially because of its proximity to the US, but also because that could involve the Gulf of Mexico, which is probably the, the worst spot that you could ask for something to go into because the heat content there is so high. Uh, we'll start things off, though, off the East Coast. Again, very close to land, so a lot of people are wondering about it. The good news is, is that we have cold fronts that are coming off of the Northeast. Uh, in fact, it still is beautiful across the Northeast with cool and dry weather. These cold fronts that are reinforcing that weather that everybody's enjoying pushes nasty weather out into the open Atlantic. So if something does pull together, which there's a low, a low chance, we're talking 20% over the next seven days, it would naturally be pushed out to sea. So just want to get that out the board because I know a lot of you are waking up at the East Coast, seeing that spot at National Hurricane Center and wondering, ooh. Especially that close to the seaboard, exactly. right? You're like, wait, where's that going? So we're right, okay. Sweep coming through. As I said, this one's a little more interesting. It, yeah. It's the same spot, Craig, that we've been tracking for weeks now, mm -hmm. to be quite honest, yeah. behind scenes and also having the open conversation with you guys as our viewers. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it, the models continue to want to try and pull something together in the next 10 days somewhere in the Gulf of Mexico yeah. and we're watching these thunderstorms that are kind of drifting through the Caribbean mm -hmm. and what happens to them when they get into the Gulf of Mexico that's the question it's so interesting the chance still a 30 percent chance over the next seven days which has come down uh, since yesterday we were 30 yesterday the day before that at 40 uh, it does once it gets to that area Britt are probably going to slow down and into mm -hmm. some warmer waters which is why it's so important to watch that one because if it does develop there in the Bay of Campeche well look what's up north the U.S. and all of the U.S. Gulf Coast states. And then really quick, we do have another spot that we're watching, a 10% shot over the next two days, so that looks less favorable, and again, no threat to the U.S. Let's go back to the service level one, start to break down a little bit more about what's going on with this storm. There is a risk of high surf all along the New England coast, Cape Cod, Mass. Oh, boy, I love this spot since I finally got to go there last week, Britta. I was going to say, you just got back. I can't wait to go back. <laughs> In fact, I should go watch these <laughs> rip currents. You know, it's going to be dangerous. you got to watch this. This area of low pressure located a few hundred miles east of North Carolina is producing some limited shower uh, thunderstorm activity there, but it is moving to the north. And you talked about that front that's going to help to sweep it out of here. But it's the wave energy that's still in the ocean, even if that uh, sister or whatever's there gets swept out to the north and northeast, you still have the wave energy coming through the waters here. Uh, when we talk about the chance of development, only 20% chance in the next seven days, 10% chance in the next two days. When you look at this just standing there alone, you're like, whoa, that's pretty close to the Carolina coast. What's the deal with that? Again, we did talk about it getting swept out thanks to that front that's actually going to bring some rain to the northeast which we'll break down in just a moment here but here's what we've got as we're looking at this system Britain. it's pretty common we see this mm -hmm. a lot sometimes in june but we can have it at this time of year for sure that spin of low pressure uh, coming off of a front sometimes it sits there for 24 48 hours and then you start to worry about it yeah like really the, the beginning of hurricane season and the end of hurricane season yeah. because of course you have to have a front and that's usually the time of year that we have fronts that are coming off of the east coast mm. Look at the strong uh, winds, a lot though. of wind shear <sighs> yeah so that's why we're saying you know there's there's a lot of hurdles that would have to be overcome for this to pull together but even if it did it would mm -hmm. be swept out to sea not it's not just the wind water. shear. Yeah, it's the temperatures. I mean, this has maybe 100 miles of, of water temperatures that are marginal, uh, 80 to 81, and then you're quickly in the 70s. Despite that, the Fox Weather exclusive model does spin up an area of low pressure, but again, not tropical probably, uh, and, and not strong enough or closed off to really be a bona fide system before the front kind of moves in. Now we do see an area of low pressure though, and that brings up to the point that you were giving, Craig, of you know dangerous rip currents, For some sure. larger surf. More the front itself cover. will do that as well with yeah. the winds coming in. That is true, you're right. And you'll probably get some of the cloud cover from that as once it's off the coast, uh, closer to Massachusetts as well. And then you've got that front coming through. Mm -hmm. You saw that Britta sweeping through there, giving us some rain. Uh, so you've got a, a different wind and and that front also will. shows an area of low pressure spinning up <laughs> off of it. So, 
I Another think the East watch. Coast, you know, the open Atlantic, I think we're going to have a couple burner storms where yeah. we mark off and name off the list, but we don't actually have big impacts from it, which is great. Which is great there, yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. Absolutely. Uh, so we'll see how things hash out. But I would just look at the rip current risk. Mm -hmm. Most kids are back in school, so fewer people at the beach. But September is what we call locals month. You know, a lot of locals like to go out to the beaches. Just be careful. So true.